I've uploaded several videos in the past where I've talked at length about the visual shortcomings of the original Sega Saturn version of Daytona USA and whether, as this was actually a game that was used as a display title in a lot of game stores when the console first launched, it might have actually put people off from purchasing the Saturn in the first place. My local Virgin Megastore, for example, had several large display stands next to each other with Daytona USA on the Saturn and Ridge Racer on the PS1 displaying side by side. And when I used to visit it with my mates when I was a teenager, all of whom were Mega Drive owners by the way, they all said that they thought Daytona USA looked shit in comparison and they would be getting Playstations. It didn't matter how faithful a conversion it was gameplay wise, based on what they could see there and then without even picking up a controller, Sega had lost their custom and I'm 100% convinced that they weren't the only people that the graphically suboptimal Saturn port of Daytona USA also had this effect on. But what if we could actually turn back the clock and make the game look a bit better? What if we could correct what I believe to be the game's most graphically egregious fault, its horrendous 20 frames per second refresh rate? Would doing that bring the game up to a standard that would make it easier to overlook its other graphical faults, namely its awful draw distance and scenery pop-up, and the nasty black borders on the top and bottom of the screen in the PAL game. What if, let's say, when Daytona came out, it ran at 30 frames per second like Sega Rally? What if we could actually go one better than that and pretend that the Saturn technology back then allowed us to play the game at 60 frames per second instead of 20? How much of a difference would it make? Well, let's have a little experiment to see, shall we? I'm going to use a program called Frame GUI to interpolate a 20 frames per second video of the Saturn game into 30 frames per second and also 60 frames per second. Just to be clear, I'm not actually playing the game in 30 or 60 frames per second. It's just a video rendering experiment I did to the video footage afterwards to see how much it improved the game. The original footage of this I recorded came from SSF Emulator, which plays the game pretty much as it is in all its low polygon resolution non-anti-alias jaggy glory, and also with no sound effects for some reason. So let's work our first bit of interpolation magic. So this is 3.7 Speedway, running as it would do normally at 20 frames per second. Let's increase that now to 30. Not bad, not bad. I think this is definitely looking noticeably a bit smoother than the game's original frame rate, and the interpolation effect is making things look a bit less choppy. You also may have noticed the image is looking a little bit sharper as well now, as frame GUI also lets you sharpen the image slightly too. Now, let's compare 20 frames per second to 60 frames per second. I'll just switch back to the 20 frames per second footage for a second to give you a chance to get used to it again. Okay, here we go then, 3.7 Speedway running on the Saturn version of Daytona, running at 60 frames per second. The fake 60 frames per second interpolation is admittedly nowhere near the silky smooth standard of its arcade counterpart, but all things considered, I don't think this is looking too bad at all really. Definitely a significant improvement on how the original 20 frames per second looks. This got me thinking after doing this initial bit of video rendering. Why stop at just improving the frame rate? Just how much better can we get this game looking? Playing the game in Yabasan Shiro emulator instead of SSF, you can actually upscale it and get rid of all the jaggies, plus the sound effects work, so bonus. The annoying black borders on the top and bottom of the screen actually make the game look a bit like it's a 16x9 video that's accidentally been rendered in 4x3 so with a bit of video cropping of the top and bottom of the screen, we can actually make it look like a widescreen video that's actually playing in the correct aspect ratio. So we've upscaled the game and got it looking nice and anti-aliased and got rid of all those jaggies. We've got rid of the black borders at the top and bottom of the screen. 
Unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about the pop-up, but the last thing we can do something about now is sorting the frame rate out. So here we go. Let's go from 20 frames per second to 60 and see how it looks. Well, holy shit, what an unbelievable difference. It's amazing just how much closer to the actual arcade version it looks like this. And for some reason that improvement in the frame rate seems to be far more noticeable on Dinosaur Canyon than it is in 777 Speedway. Now, all these changes we've made would have, let's be honest here, been completely beyond the scope of the Saturn back in the day. But as a little experiment, it's fun to think how things could have looked with some slightly more advanced technology. And really, the initial question I posed was just how much of a difference increasing the frame rate alone would have made. So let's say, hypothetically, that the Saturn version of Daytona had been able to run at 60 frames per second, despite its other graphical flaws. I think I can say for certain that this would have definitely favourably influenced me in terms of buying the console. Frame rate really is that all-important key as far as I'm concerned to capturing the arcade experience. But would this alone have been enough to influence the wider public at large? I guess we'll never know. You place first. first. Now, now list, list your, your name, name with the, with the other, other champions. champions. 